Hello everyone, this is Mar Haddad here. In this first lecture, I'm going to explain to you what is Capsman, so why we need to have Capsman in our network and how to use it. And then I'm going to do this lab, which is about eight points, as you can see here, to connect the access points to the Capsman. And then later we need to make some configuration on those access points from the Capsman. But before we go into the details, let me just explain to you what is the Capsman and uh, where we need to use it and why we need to use it in our network. And then we come back to the lab and then we will do the points one by one. So let's go now to the explanation to explain to you why we need to have Capsman. This is our lab scenario as you can see here. And this lab scenario is gonna be for the whole course. So we are going to use the same lab scenario for the whole course. But before I speak about the lab scenario, I just want to say what is the Capsman. So we always hear Microtech Capsman. So why we need to have it and what is the Capsman? The idea is very easy. Imagine you have a hotel where you want to install tens or maybe hundreds of access points in a hotel. So imagine that every time we, you want to install an access point, you have to go to that access point, you have to configure it, put it SSID, make the security, changing the power. You have to do many things in each of the access points. So if you have, for example, 50, 60 access points, then you have to do the work 50, 60 times. And every time if you want to make some changes, you have to go back to the access points and you have to do the changes on the access point itself. Instead of having that, what you can do, you can elect one of the access points and you can make it as a CAPS man. CAPS means controlled access point. Man means manager. So this CAPS man becomes like a manager for the whole access point, which means that if you connect all those access points to that CAPS man, then this CAPS man will be controlling all the access points. If you want to change on all the access points, the access ID, you can make one click on the CAPS man and all access ID will be changed on the uh, access points. If you want to change the uh, security password, then also you change it on the CAPS man and everything will be propagated directly to the access points. So this is the whole idea of the CAPS man. And as you can see here, this is my lab scenario. I'm gonna have this router here, which is, I'm gonna make it the CAPS man. And this router is connected to the internet on Ethernet 1 and is connected to this switch on Ethernet 2. Then I bring another router also, which is AP2, access point 2, and I connect it to Ethernet 2 and uh, on the switch. And also AP3, I connect it on Ethernet 2 to this switch. So the design is very easy. We have three routers and uh, two of them that are going to be the access points where I'm going to make the management of those access points from the uh, CAPS man. So one of is going to be the CAPS man where I do all the configuration and then this will propagate it directly to the access points. And then I'm putting here my laptop because I need the, here to connect to the uh, switch in order to be able to get connected uh, to Winbox to all these three access points. So for this lab, we need to do the following. As all the access points are connected to uh, the same switch, then there is a layer two connectivity. When you work on layer two connectivity, then you can add the access points to the CAPS man because CAPS man and the, and the uh, CAPS, which are the access points, they are able to communicate on layer two and they, they will discover each other on layer two. You can also do it on layer three, then, but then you need IP address. But in my case, if you have layer two, so, so you don't have any configuration on the router at all, it's only layer two connectivity, then the uh, um, CAPS, uh, they can get connected to the CAPS man without any problem. So all the idea is to connect the CAPS, which are the access points to the CAPS man. I have layer two, and then in this case, I'm gonna show you in this lab how you can connect the CAPS to the CAPS man. So this is the whole idea of this lab. Let's go now to the points and start doing them. And then I will show you in the points the details of how you can connect the access points to the CAPS man. Point number one, all routers are reset uh, with no default config and names are changed as per the graph. So this point is done and let me just put the graph here so you can follow what I'm doing. So I have already changed the names uh, on the, the uh, routers and also I have reset the configuration. So if you go to any of the routers, there is no any configuration. I reset everything. If you want to know how I did that, um, it's uh, very easy. You go to when you put your router on, you, pull, you go to system and you go to reset config and you say no default configuration and then you click reset configuration. Then it will wipe all the default configuration or any configuration which is on 
your router. And the only thing that I did, I just uh, uh, have gone to system identity and then I have put here the name just to know that this is going to be the Capsman and the other one was are going to be the AP2 and AP3. So this is what I've done on the routers and there is no any configuration on the routers on the three routers. Point number two, log into the Capsman and enable it with no certificate. So now what I need to do, I have to say, okay, the router, which is um, the Capsman router that I have elected to be the Capsman router, I want to make it Capsman. So I have to enable the feature of the Capsman on that router. So we can use certificates and that's something I'm gonna show you in the lab. What is the difference of using the certificates and not using certificates? So let's do that. So I will go to the Capsman. And here you can see there is here in the second tab here after quick site there is the Capsman. You click on it and here you have to go to manager. So I'm saying that I want this router to be the Capsman, to be the Caps manager. And then I will say enable and that's it. And then you say apply and okay. Then this router now has become the Capsman. It's very straightforward. You don't need to do a lot of uh, things to make the uh, router a Capsman router. You only need to click on enable and that's it. Point number two is done. Now, point number three, log into AP2 and AP3 and let them join the Capsman. So again, we have now, if we go back to the picture here, we have layer two connectivities because they are all connected to the switch and the switch is a layer two switch. Okay, so as we have layer two connectivity, then they will discover, the Capsman can discover the Caps and also the Caps can find the Capsman using the layer 3. It's possible also on layer 3, but as you have layers 2, then you don't need IP addresses. It is automatically discovering without any problem. Now, the communication between the Capsman and the Caps and vice versa use something called DTLS. And that's when they are communicating for the management and not for the traffic, the, the data. So that means when they are going to uh, find the Capsman and they're going to associate to that cap, Capsman and then there is a, some type of encryption called DTLS. But when they want to send the traffic data, then there is no encryption. If you want encryption, you can do some tunneling, but that's not important, okay? So it depends on your network design. If you want to, for example, secure your data, then you can make some type of tunneling between your Caps and your Capsman. But uh, in my case, I'm not going to do that. But by default, DTLS is an encryption protocol that used for the management traffic. That means when the CAPS and the CAPSman are going to uh, communicate to each other to uh, be connected to each other. All right. So now we have enabled CAPSman here. Now we need to make those two access points to be connected to this CAPSman. So how to do that? Let's go to uh, the AP2. We go to AP2, that is AP2, you look here on the name. All you need to do, you have to go to wireless, and then from here, you have to go to CAP. You see it over here. And then when you go to CAP, you have to say, okay, I want to enable this one to be a CAP, a control access point, okay? And uh, the interface that is gonna be controlled by the CAPSman, because we are working on the wireless, we want that the interface WLAN1 of this access point to be controlled by the Capsman. Remember the idea of the hotel? We want to provide wireless to hold the hotel. Then we want that the Capsman to control the wireless of this access point. And then certificate, we don't have now certificate. We will do it later, but for now we didn't make any certificate on the Capsman, so we keep it not. So, and then the discovery interface. So how the Capsman can discover this access point? He will discover it on Ethernet 2. And if we go back to the picture here, we are working on uh, the access point 2. Then access point 2 is connected via its port Ethernet 2 to this switch. Okay, that means that on Ethernet 2, the Capsman can find this access point. All right, that's what I need to do over here on the AP2. And then I will click on OK. And we wait a little bit and then we will see in a moment that this interface, which is WLAN1, is going to be, you can see now directly it showed up. It is managed by the Capsman and by default it will show that it is, as you can see here, it is disabled. But it is disabled because it is going to be managed by the Capsman. While later we will see that when we work on the Capsman and we 
provide the SSID and everything on to that interface, then it will work without any problem. So when you see disabled here, it doesn't mean that the interface is disabled. It means that it is controlled by the Tapsman. So, and if we go now to the Tapsman, we can see directly here on the CAP interfaces, it directly shows that there is one router here, which is called CAP4. It is shown up over here, okay? And uh, that's uh, good. Now we have to go to the AP3, and then we go to wireless, CAP, and we say here also enabled interfaces that are going to be controlled or is going to be controlled because you may have more than one interface you can see but now we only have wlan1 you maybe have another interface which is on 5 gigahertz you can also add it here so it is controlled by the capsman and the discovery is also on ethernet too and i will say okay and it will take a few um, seconds and then it will show that this interface is controlled by Capsman. And as you can see, it shows directly here. And if we go to the Capsman, we can see now we have those two are shown on the Capsman, Cap4 and Cap5. You can also change the name here. So if you want, you can just double click here. And uh, from here, you can go to the name here and you can name it for example ap2 because that's for ap2 and also you can change that one if you want you can make it ap3 because that's the one for ap3 and then you say okay and as you can see now i just changed the name so we can recognize which one is for ap2 and which one is for ap3 so you can see everything is automatically and we don't have any configuration on the capsman or on the CAPS as IP addresses, we only have layer two connectivity and we enabled CAPSman and we enabled CAP on the, the other uh, routers and then they are now connected to the CAPSman. Point number three is done. We have logged into the AP2 and AP3 and then they joined CAPSman. And then point number four, check if AP2 and AP3 show on the CAPSman and we have seen that they're showing without any problem. Point number five, for more security between the Capsman and the access points, you decide to create certificates. So you need to generate first the certificate on the Capsman. So what is the idea here? If we go back to the picture, we already now have the Capsman and the access points are connected to each other without any problem, but we didn't use any certificate. That means anyone who has a Capsman now and you put it on my network and my Capsman, for example, is off. Then in this case, possibly that the access point, the new one, or also the old one, they can get communicated to the new Capsman. And that's something I don't want. I just want to make some type of security that I know that only my uh, access points are going to speak only to the Capsman, which is I have configured. So the idea is following. I go to the Capsman and I generate certificates. So I just make a certificate on my Capsman and this certificate is created by the router itself. So you don't need to buy it, it's generated by the router itself. And then when I create the certificate, I go to the access points here and I will say that on the access point, I will ask to receive this certificate. So this certificate will be sent from the Capsman to the access point uh, here, in this case, access point two and to access point three. Then the certificate will be received here and it will be received also on the access point three. Then as this access point is the same on all those three uh, routers, on the Capsman and the two uh, CAPS, then in this case, you can do something like locking to this uh, certificate on the CAP. That means that those CAPS will work only on the Capsman, which has the same certificate. Okay, now there is an option on the Capsman here that uh, it says the require peer certificate. That means that the routers or the access points that needs to work with the Capsman, they require to have a certificate. And this one, it's important to enable it, but you enable it only when the certificate is being sent to the uh, CAPS, to the access points. If you enable it before that uh, this certificate is sent to the CAPS, then the CAPS will never receive the certificate. Okay, so be sure that first you create the certificate on the Capsman, and then you go to the apps, and then you say, I want to receive the certificate that was created on the Capsman. And after that, you just enable that feature to say that you want 
that only the cups with the certificates to be able to communicate to the cupsman. Don't do it before that because the cup will not receive the certificate in this case. So first we have to generate the certificate on the cupsman. We go to the cupsman. This is my cupsman and here I have to say manager and here we say certificate. We put it auto and CA certificate we put auto. CA means certificate authority. That's the authority which will sign the certificate. And then I will say apply. Look here on generated certificate and generated CA certificate. It will show in a moment. Normally to generate the certificate it takes a few seconds and then we will see them in a moment. So let's wait a little bit. So now the generated CA certificate has been created and the certificate also has been created here. And if you want, you can go here to system and you go to certificates. You can see that those two are shown here. This is the CA and this is the certificate. Those are two are for the cups one. Okay, so that's the first step I need to do. And look here, require pre-certificate. Do not click that before the certificate is being sent to the CAPS. Otherwise, the CAPS will never receive the certificate. Okay, that's what I was saying here. Require pre-certificate, we do it later. And then we say, okay. Point number five is done. Point number six, we have created the certificate on the CAPS man. Now on point number six, we say, on the access point two and AP3, which are the CAPS, we have to assign the certificate request to receive the certificate from the CAPS man. Now, we have the certificate on the CAPS man. We want the two uh, CAPS to receive this certificate. So how to do that? We go to, let's go to first to AP2. This is AP2. You can see it's still managed by the CAPS man. From here, I have to go to CAP. And here, uh, when we enabled the uh, CAP, we said that certificate, we leave it now. Now we put it re to request. And then I will say, okay. Now it is requesting the certificate. You see? It's not anymore managed because it needs to receive now the uh, certificate from the CAPSman and then it will be managed by the CAPSman again. So here we go. You see now it's managed by the CAPSman again. If we go now again to CAP, we can see that the requested certificate is received. It is there. And also if we go to System, Certificate, we can see those two. This one is the certificate. Okay. We go to AP3 and we do the same. We go to CAP, certificate, request, and then we say now apply. We should see it in a moment. The requested certificate showed here. So this is the requested certificate. It's there. And it is now managed by the CAPSman without any problem. And we go to the CAPSman. We can see that those two access points are shown over here without any problem. Port number six is done. We have requested the certificates on AP2 and AP3 and they received. Now port number seven, does the two access points, do, do the two access points show on the CAPSman? Yes, we have seen they're shown on the CAPSman. Now before I go to port number eight, I just want to go to the CAPSman now. As the certificate is being received by the access point, what you can do here on the manager, you can say require peer certificates. That means that only the CAPS with the same certificate of the CAPS man, they can communicate with them. And then I will say, okay, you see now it gets disconnected, but in a moment it will show connected again. And also if we go to the CAPS, we can see that they are now controlled by the CAPS man without any problem. Okay, so you can see that everything is fine and uh, the uh, Cups are now able to be controlled by the cups man without any problem. Now, point number eight, to make it even more secure that AP2 and AP3 only log to our cups man, enable to cups man on both access points. So what we need to do now, to be more precise, what we can do, we can go to the cup, we go, for example, to AP2. And from here on the cup, we can say, okay, I have received this certificate, and this is the certificate. And uh, it's received from the uh, CAPSman, that's fine. What I want to do now, as I have the certificate, so if we go here, instead of request, we can click here. We see that this is the certificate that I have received. I will click on it and I will say lock to CAPSman. So I just want that this access point is locked to the CAPSman. Okay, that means it will never work with any other CAPSman unless it has the same certificate. 
Okay, so I'll say like here apply, and you can see here log Capsman common name, it will show in a moment here. So this access point is now locked to that Capsman, so we make it more secure, and it is managed by the Capsman. We go to the uh, AP3, and also we say certificate this one, and then I will make it locked to Capsman. Apply, and then we should we should see it here, locked Capsman common name and then we say and it is indeed controlled by the Capsman and on the Capsman we see everything is still there without any problem. Point number eight is done and with this point we have done the first step which is to enable the Capsman and enable the Caps to connect them together and uh, then we have used the certificate and uh, also required P certificate and the lock to certificate from the Caps to the Capsman so the caps are only controlled by this caps man so this is what i wanted to show you in the first uh, lecture of uh, this course i hope it was informative for you and i will see you in the upcoming lecture